Most modern Unreal Engine games are objectively ugly, and scientific data proves it. By the end of this video, you'll have the quantifiable data to prove liars wrong about why games from almost a decade ago look more realistic and why the richness they provide has very little to do with baked lighting or nostalgia. One of the custom engine modifications responsible for the amazing realism in the Callisto Protocol is key in explaining what's missing in modern games and even path-traced visuals. This concept being BRDFs. These are equations that simulate diffuse and specular interactions between digital lights and digital materials. For years, graphics have been using a 264-year-old diffuse equation called Lambert. In 1994, the inaccuracies with Lambert were made very apparent when compared to a photographic reference meant to show off the improvements of a new diffuse model called Ornayar. Now this clay example does a pretty good job showing how quickly Lambert begins to deviate from realistic behavior, but this comparison doesn't do a good job showing what's wrong with Ornayar. There's a better way to view BRDFs using slices. Now these can be pretty overwhelming to look at if you're new to graphics, but it's very easy to understand when common patterns are defined. What you're looking at specifically are real material BRDFs that come from the 2003 Merle database that measured 100 different real-world materials as BRDFs. It's important to stress that these are not equations. Diffuse models like Oranear and specular models like Blinn are supposed to match these organic slices using arithmetics. While the Merle database acts as a competitive reference over photographs, the data is overly repetitive because they measure a lot of similar materials but with different colors. For instance, almost a tenth of this database are different colored phenelics, and in 2025 I think it would benefit companies like AMD or Disney to fund more BRDF measurements of more versatile materials in the Merle database format. Now the lower left corner shows the grazing retroreflection. Notice how fully rough Oranear and Chan offer that behavior while Lambert's BRDF completely lacks this. Here are some teeth with Lambert shading in a photographic reference. Notice the visual richness when a more Oranear-like grazing retroreflection is added. The difference is pretty huge and is similar to what we see in the original Oranear photographic comparison. Oranear was eventually used for diffuse lighting in Rise, Son of Rome, and Godot. While a self-admittedly low-effort implementation of the Chan Diffuse model exists as an alternative to Unreal's default Lambert model adopted in 2013. Yes, for at least 12 years, Unreal has been using the Lambert equation as their default diffuse model. But models like Oranear cannot produce other patterns found in the Merle database, such as the Diffuse Fresnel and its falloff range. The 2012 Burley Diffuse model implicitly alters the grazing retroreflection and diffuse Fresnel based on roughness, because they could trace this behavior to a physical basis as well as patterns noticed in the Merle database. This means with the Burley model, complex roughness maps for materials not only have their roughness changed, but their diffuse Fresnel and grazing retroreflection. So without much effort, an extremely rich image is provided through quantifiable realistic aspects that are impossible to express with Lambert. Outside of post-2012 Pixar animations, several engines like Frostbite, Spartan Engine, the Gran Turismo Engine, and many others adopted the Burley Diffuse model. Older versions of UE4 offered somewhat hidden ways to swap out the Lambert model for Ornea or Burley, but as always, only 5% of devs would take the time to alter a default setting. Epic Games made it slowly harder and harder for people to enable, to the point where no UE games use these models anymore. The Burley Diffuse model is why Need for Speed 2015, Star Wars Battlefront titles, and other commonly praised Frostbite titles look so realistic, and or aesthetically pleasing. The Callisto Protocol's environments have that obvious plastic bland Unreal Engine look that is so strongly defined through a Lambert GGX BRDF, whereas the Burley Diffuse surfaces and Dead Space Remake convey a professional polished look and shading quality because your brain isn't as bothered by major inaccuracies. Lambert causes mental exhaustion because people's brains are trying too hard to fill in gaps. That's why comments and memes like this are so incredibly stupid and designed to cover up the real problem. These memes honestly help Epic Games and their engine defenders lie to people about justifying unneeded upgrades. The market isn't tired of realism, the market is tired of the deficiency of realism. But why do characters and certain outfits in the Callisto Protocol looks so beautifully realistic despite using UE4. Because it's just these objects that aren't using Unreal's Lambert GGX BRDF. The quality of these objects could never be achieved with Unreal Engine because the game uses the Callisto BRDF. You see, the developers of the Callisto Protocol were focusing on total photorealism in human characters, and it seems they felt that Burley's implicit behavior couldn't balance these three aspects well enough to match the unknown BRDF equivalents of human skin. 
But Burley also doesn't express other Merle BRDF patterns that the Callisto BRDF defines. The Callisto BRDF uses Lambert as a foundation and per-material controls for grazing retroreflection and diffuse Fresnel. The Callisto BRDF even adds controls for tinting these aspects to further match Merle database BRDFs. But I don't think these tints are what put the Callisto BRDF so ahead of the Chan and Burley model. It also accounts for a smooth terminator, which is expressed in real material BRDFs in the upper right corner. A smooth terminator provides a more gradual transition between the lit and unlit surface. It's extremely interesting that real life plastic doesn't have a smooth terminator, which proves most BRDFs used in today's games and even CGI resemble plastic-like behavior. These are the aspects in which a diffuse model needs to express in 2025. But the full Callisto BRDF also adds controls to Unreal Specular model GGX, which is also used in the full Disney BRDF. The 2007 GGX model is actually an accidental reinvention of the Trowbridge Wrights model from 1975, so it makes sense that it would need a modern touch-up, and the Callisto BRDF does that by providing a specular smooth terminator and a specular Fresnel falloff. The Callisto BRDF shows just how lacking the industry standard BRDF really is. In this comparison specifically, notice that really satisfying collision between the diffuse smooth terminator and the higher specular Fresnel falloff, which is only possible with this model. This doesn't just help faces. It clearly helps other materials like cloth, leather, and rubber. But there are two major problems with the Callisto BRDF. First, there's a limit of 255 materials on screen that can use the Callisto BRDF, because some of the G-buffer channels are repurposed to tell the lighting shader to reference these extra inputs inside a subsurface profile texture. When a material doesn't have a subsurface profile, it's shaded with the default Callisto BRDF values, which were designed to match Unreal's default Lambert GGX BRDF. This is why the majority of the game's visuals have that typical Unreal Engine look. The mixed look has allowed Unreal Engine shills to badmouth realism by bundling the two looks as Unreal Engine realism. The Unreal Engine tag on this comparison is demeaning to Striking Distance Studios, and it unfairly helps Epic Games promote their engine because it shows off results that are impossible to achieve with Epic's engineering. Back to the Callisto BRDF. You can't fit all these parameters into an efficient G-buffer layout. Forward Plus, on the other hand, can easily support the Callisto BRDF on all materials because it never needs all these extra values later in the pipeline, meaning there wouldn't be a 255 material limit. But the other issue with the Callisto BRDF is that it has no implicit behavior. Now, it's understandable dropping Burley because of an unbalanced implicit approach for skin, and maybe supporting special case BRDF values is a good idea, but the default BRDF behavior could have introduced some form of implicit controls for all the defined patterns. The smooth terminator and specular Fresnel falloff must be researched and explained physically so we can efficiently tie their expression arithmically to basic PBR values like the implicit Burley diffuse model. Because implicit behavior provides automatic enrichment to digital content. This is the direction our studio wants to pursue, because 8th gen games and above should be using lighting models more advanced than Burley. Because forget being at least more advanced than Lambert, because that's literally centuries behind where we should be today. But the engineering teams behind leading engines, and even multi-billion dollar companies, don't care about dedicating engineering in this area for several reasons. Consumers who are taught to have low standards keep Lambert-lit games like Fortnite profitable. Epic has fooled their slave-like indie communities into thinking their engineering is somehow above pure mediocrity. And the last and major reason is because game and Hollywood producers don't know enough about graphics to demand better lighting models from their engineers or engine providers. There's a reason why Epic Games doesn't use realistic characters in most of their demos. Because then people would notice and fixate on how off Unreal shading is. The moment a semi-realistic style is introduced, their lackluster BRDF opens an uncanny valley floodgate. The overly praised Matrix demo characters look like absolute trash in comparison with Callisto or Burly BRDF driven visuals. Epic tries to hide a lot of their visual deficiencies with motion blur, tons of film grain, and blurry filmic filters. The Andy Serkis demo, the UAPN MetaHuman demo, the Witcher demo all have this disgusting plastic CGI look that we don't need to have in 2025. Hellblade 2 has some of the best looking UE5 characters, and even on a 4090, there's a plastic CGI look in the skin. And then there's the fact that the Callisto BRDF visuals don't rely on path tracing like technologies to compensate for dated BRDF visuals, such as the disgustingly Lambert shaded Indiana Jones game 
that only ignorant reviewers with low graphic standards pretend looks realistic. Before anyone mentions UE5's substrate system, that alters the BSDF, which cannot fix BRDF issues. We shouldn't have to drown game visuals in blur, noise, chromatic aberration, lens distortion, and all these other tryhard effects to portray realism. It's all compensation. When I look at Callisto BRDF visuals with minimal anti-aliasing and camera emulation effects, there's a window light clarity portrayed through the monitor, and that peaks immersion. Our next video will continue this discussion and show additional aspects of realism that the Callisto protocol neglects, causing their BRDF work to often fail in the realism department. Our next video will also break down the entire GPU pipeline to show why the game performs badly, to both learn from the mistakes and show why bad performance has nothing to do with the newer BRDF. For now, this video needs to be a wake-up call for all influencers to the fact that Unreal cannot produce realism, making the common upgrade argument much less legitimate in comparison with past PC gaming, where graphics were legitimately improving. Consumers and devs should look back on the asinine statements made by Digital Foundry and alike influencers and recognize the logic flaws and incompetence and mainstream graphic critique that has gotten us where we are today. Before people start writing, not all games need realism, people and influencers must distinguish style and graphic quality. Style quality is somewhat subjective, but the quality of 3D graphics is not, because the shading quality is interpreted by your brain subconsciously and compares the shading with behavior your brain has to like because your brain has to cope with reality. And if we can quantify how much a model compares with reality, we can define and measure an objective standard. Lastly, the recent obsession with AI shading should infuriate you, because now everyone should be aware of the fact that deterministic, hardware agnostic shading is being neglected, and it's allowing inefficient, vendor-biased, unstable AI to appear as a solution, when in fact it is just an incompetent, anti-consumer band-aid. A huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. This is the best way to support our unique and undiluted takes on modern graphics. Joining our Patreon helps the entire industry get access to easily understandable graphics research meant to reset people's standards to where it should be today and helps us approach the revenue surplus we need to resume the production of our game. Keep a lookout for our next video, which should be coming out faster than usual. Thank you for your support.